What's going on guys? Welcome to the Toon Bench. My name is Jimmy Goodman. I've been a snowboard tech for over a decade and I'm here to show you some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. Today on the Toon Bench, we're gonna show you how to mount your Jones bindings to your Jones snowboard. Once you get the hang of it, mounting your bindings is easy. But there are several important things that you need to know because how you mount the bindings plays a major role in how the board will perform. To mount your bindings, first pick a good location. A nice, flat, sturdy table or a workbench is best. Then, you're gonna need a screwdriver. That's not it. There we go. Number two is gonna work the best because it's gonna get the best fit on the screw and make sure you don't strip. And then, don't forget your boots. We're gonna need those later too. Okay, now we're ready to start. When you open the Jones binding box, you will see a right and a left binding. A plastic bag containing four x four discs, mounting hardware, a leash, instruction manual, and bushings. The mounting hardware consists of eight screws and eight washers. Place the screws in the washers like so. Set them to the side so they are ready to pick up and insert. Jones bindings has a footbed that lifts open to access the four x four discs. You can bend it back and click your toe strap couple clicks to keep it out of the way. Next up, take a look at the 4x4 mounting disc. You'll notice that the four holes on the 4x4 disc are not symmetrical on the disc. They are pushed just slightly closer to one side of the disc than the other. You'll also see that the disc has degree markings on all four sides. Locate the two holes that are closer to the edge of the disc and place the disc into the binding with those holes closer to the front of the binding toward the toe side. For now, line up the disc so that the center degree marking lines up with the center marking on the post of the binding. When the disc is in this position, the binding is in a zero degree position and has no positive or negative stance angle. Also make sure the slots in the disc are perpendicular to the board so that there is adjustability to move the binding toe to heel, but not side to side. Now that you have the four x four disc in the starting position, you'll need to determine where you would like to position the bindings on the board. First thing that you need to know is whether you'll set up the board goofy or regular. A regular stance is left foot forward, a goofy stance is right foot forward. Chances are you'll already know if you're goofy or regular, but if you don't, stand with your feet a comfortable distance apart and have a friend slightly push from behind. Whatever foot you lean forward on to catch yourself from falling is most likely your front foot. Okay, so you determine goofy versus regular. Now take a look at the insert packs on your board and look for the reference stance markings. If the board is sized correctly for you, the reference stance will usually be a good starting point for your ideal stance width. If you are primarily a freestyle rider, you might want to go a little wider than the reference stance. Or if you are a surf slasher, you might want to go a little narrower than the reference stance. But don't stress this for now. You can always fine tune your stance width after you take a few laps on your board. Now identify the nose of the board versus the tail of the board. If you are a regular footer, place the left binding towards the nose. If you are a goofy footer, place the right binding towards the nose. The buckles of the binding should always be on the outside. Different stance angles will benefit different styles of riding. Depending on how you set up your angles, it will make carving easier, it will give you more power to your edge, or it will make riding switch a lot easier. Most riders like stance angles that offer a good blend of performance for all these riding skills. This could be called an all-mountain stance. This stance has a front foot with a positive angle anywhere between about 12 to 24, and a back foot will have any angle between about negative three to positive three. A positive angle means the binding is angled towards the nose of the board. A negative angle means the binding is angled towards the tail of the board. You never want a negative angle on the front binding. So let's start with the front binding. Look at the markings on the 4x4 disc. You'll see that there are degree markings on both sides of the center marking with 15 degrees being the first numbered marking. Rotate the disc to the right clockwise such that the center marking on the post now lines up with the 15 degree marking on the 4x4 disc. If you mount your binding with the disc in this position, your front foot will have a positive 15 degree stance angle, which is a really good starting point. Now find the reference stance holes on the front insert pack of your board. Place the front binding over these inserts such that the center of the holes lines up with the four insert holes. Now grab your screwdriver and screws. We recommend screwing the first screw in without a washer. This allows for easier connection with the insert by compressing the bushing. Once you have the first screw in without a washer, then add the three final screws with washers. 
Do not fully tighten the screws yet though. Just thread them enough so that the binding is in the position over the four inserts and it will not spin. Then remove the screw with no washer and add the washer and slightly tighten. Before we tighten everything up, we need to check that the binding is centered between the edges as best as possible. Do this by dropping down your footbed and placing the boot in the binding, making sure the right boot is in the right binding. If the binding is the proper size for your boot size and the board width, your boot should come right to the edge of the toe ramp or just a tiny bit past it. And the toe ramp should end right at the start of the edge's bevel. Now take a look at how the heel of your boot lines up with the heel edge. You do not want your boot heel to hang over the heel edge. If your boot is hanging over the heel edge, you are very likely to wash out and not be able to hold an edge. Now look again at how you have mounted the screws in a 4x4 disc. If you have mounted the screws in the middle of the slot, you have a CM of adjustability on either side to fine tune the position of the binding relative to the toe and heel edge. To adjust, simply loosen the screws and slide the binding forward or back without letting the binding spin. To adjust toe to heel centering beyond just the 0.5 centimeters that the mounting slot allows, you can also flip the disc 180 degrees, which will put the mounting slots that are slightly closer to the edge of the disc toward the heel edge. This will push the binding more towards the heel edge if necessary. At this point, your front binding is looking good and it's time to move on to the back binding. Moving to the back binding, you want to repeat a similar procedure. But this time, only spin the 4x4 disc either one notch to the right, making it a positive 3 degree angle, or one notch to the left, making it a negative 3 degree angle. Or do not spin at all and keep the binding in a 0 degree stance position. If you want to make turning and carving slightly easier, push the binding to the positive three degree angle. If you want to make riding switch slightly easier, push the binding to the negative three degree angle. And don't stress if you're not sure what to choose. You can always just adjust later. Setting your back foot at zero is also a good starting position. And then when you are riding, think about whether it feels more comfortable to have your knee turn just slightly in or slightly out and then adjust positive or negative from there. So once you've figured out your back angle, just repeat the exact same steps that you did with your front binding and screw everything in. All right guys, now with the bindings on the board, it's time to adjust the straps and the forward lean. All right, grab your boots, tighten them up so you know they'd be like what you'd actually had them on your feet. You're gonna throw them in the bindings. With the buckles pretty tight, the strap should be centered over your boot, and the buckles should not be at the end of the ladder strap. If the strap looks off-centered, flip open the toolless adjustment screw, unscrew the screw, and adjust the strap either way until the strap is centered and the buckle is tight without bottoming out on the ladder. This is also the time to adjust the heel strap between surf mode and free ride mode. If you want more ankle tweakability for the free riding or surf slashing, Flip the heel strap such that the surf mode markings on the inside of the heel strap are pointed up. If you want the binding to be more responsive, keep the heel strap in the free ride mode position. All Jones bindings, other than the Meteorite Surf Series model, come with a heel strap set up in free ride mode. All right, after these adjustments, the bindings and the strap should be ready to rip. The last remaining thing is to adjust the high back. Look at the back of the binding, which is called the high back and find the forward lean adjustment. The forward lean adjustment is different for each Jones binding model, but the concept of what you are adjusting is always the same. Forward lean determines how far the high back angle is set toward the heel side versus angled toward the toe side. When you have a lot of forward lean, the high back is angled toward the toe side. When you run no forward lean, or as little as the binding allows, the high back is as vertical as it can be relative to the binding. Jones bindings come set up with the least amount of forward lean as possible. For most riders, this is a good place to start. Don't touch the forward lean adjustment and just go ride. To add forward lean, lower the block so that it sticks out lower and doesn't let the high back rock back quite as far in the binding. By increasing the forward lean, your leg movements will have a more direct effect on your heel edge, which promotes edge power. Forward lean is a personal preference. Some riders love it and some hate it. 
It is also common to run more forward lean on your back binding than your front binding, which gives your front boot more room to tweak. Forward lean is also not as beneficial when riding powder. It is mainly a benefit when carving on firmer snow. And once again, if you are not sure about what forward lean you want, don't stress it. You can always experiment and adjust it later. All right, did you get all that? I hope so, because if you did, your board and binding should be ready to shred. Well, thanks for tuning in to Tomb Bench, and we'll see you next time. For more information on how to fine tune your stance width and stance angles, also check out our how-to videos on advanced stance adjustments.